Golly gosh, where's the year going? Next thing you know, Santa Claus will be polishing up his sled. The kids will be writing their lists. Heck, you don't know what's going to happen, do you? This world's going so fast. Or maybe I'm just getting old and sleeping in a bit more. Here we go for November's Q&A for the questions that were sent to us probably in October. And our first question comes from Matt and he says, Hey Bushby man, can you suggest a reliable online shop where I can buy a Paradise Bee Box? Because there's lots of scams on the web and, they're, and you're absolutely right about that. It's absolutely hectic. I bought my bee boxes from the Australian, bee, Australian Honey Bee guys. If you go on there, type that in, it'll come up with their web page. They sell all sorts of stuff but they are suppliers of the Paradise Beehive and pallets and uh, that's where I bought mine from so uh, they're a reputable dealer here in Australia. If you're in the rest of the world I'm not 100% sure where you go but perhaps if it was anything like me I just buy one and make sure it's what I want and then you order the next 50 but you know perhaps don't order a thousand first straight up if you're not sure about them. That's my piece of advice. And Michael's written in and he says Hey Mark, I have up to four swarms this year in my flow hive. And I usually catch, oh hang on, it's seasonal. So this is a regular event. I usually catch one or two, which is typical with swarms. And generally you catch the blooming second one that you don't want, because there's only the little after swarm. And it takes a couple of months for them to repopulate. What can I do to stop them? Because of course the thing you got to remember is when the bees decide to swarm, they go and gorge themselves on all the resources. They'll fill their honey tummies. Some of them will fill up their legs with pollen. Then they all get motivated and take the old queen on a bit of a flight. Whoosh, and off they go. So they've rampaged your hive. And what's more annoying is that there's usually a secondary swarm and a thirdly swarm if they've grazed enough queens. So they take a few little queens as well. And so your population does get a complete pounding. And the reason they swarm is because they run out of room. So as you would have noticed, I think I read here that you actually had a really high population before they swarm, which is exactly what happens. They get too many bees, they get too much population, and it's their natural instinct to expand and say, well, we've got enough resources, let's multiply, and we'll go out and find a new home. And it's just Mother Nature's way of, of dealing with it. But my first suggestion would be get yourself another box and put on top of the, uh, so you make a double brood box, and then put your flow frames on top of that. You'll have a bit more room for the ladies to live in there. And that should slow them down for a little while. And if, but also a good idea is to perhaps think about requeening every other year. So that sort of slows them down. Or as well, a bit of manipulation is what I normally do is if you go past the hive and it's doing really well, you want to make yourself a split. So you actually divide the hive yourself. So you keep all the bees, you keep them divided. And then you can either sell that split off to a friend or you can multiply and end up like most of us beekeepers with more bees than boxes. Owner's has written in and said, here's one for you. The couple of years of my bees have had a taste for old decomposing car tyres. He has a bush block with some old rubbish tips. Of course, it has tyres in it. And he also reckons that he's seen them picking up the decomposing tyres and carting them back to their hive. Well, I'm not really sure about whether they pick up tyres. I've never seen them cart that away. What I would be tipping is that the bees are in there just getting some moisture because if you, you have old rubber tyres and it rains and they're really quite well at catching water in the rims of the old tyres and if you've got a pile of them, well they bloody stack up and they generally don't evaporate. So I would suggest that they've decided that that's a good water source. Perhaps one time they'd run out of water and they just, well hell, they'll go anywhere when they want a drink. And once they've found a resource, they'll keep going there. And if there's water there, they'll keep using it. And yeah, that's my thought. It's probably beautiful, fresh rainwater. Seems to store pretty good in a tire as a general rule. And they probably have a good little drinking area because they can land on the edge and just drink what they want. But hell, I don't know. Send me a photo of them carrying a the tire back. I mean, what are they going to be building a car in their hive or what? Right, Michael's written in and he says, do the girls get a bit stroppy when you render the wax? And have you stayed with this process or have you found a better way? Oh mate, there is so rendering wax. Now there's a fun game. Now, generally if you're just doing the cappings, well that's pretty straightforward. It's when you get the old brood frames and you're trying to clean them up. Oh man, yes, but I've ended up, I've transitioned into a saucepan pretty much so I can boil the water a bit easier. A mate of mine down the road, he's invented this really cool system where he's got two pots and he's got the wax running off the top of one and into another and everything's hot and he keeps rotating it. I don't know, that's a prototype at the minute. That's looking pretty promising. 
but it's all relative to how good an engineer you are and what sort of crap you got laying around. Me, I've just got a saucepan, I'm boiling that, and as far as the ladies getting stroppy, it's generally because they can smell the old honey that you cook it up and that sends a pheromone or the honey smell into the air and they want to get that and have a feed. So I try to do it inside of like a sealed tent. I've got a woman, well, you would have seen in my original show, I had a tent that we did the honey extraction in to keep the bees away. Well, I, now I do the wax, wax cleaning in there because this stops you getting attacked. So the ladies can get as stroppy as they like as long as they can't sting me. And Mindy's written in and said, how important do you think it is to remove old queens a couple of days prior to adding a new queen? And can you do it on the same day? Well, now, Mindy, there's a, there's a great question. That's going to really depend on how cranky your bees are. Really, if the, the angry, if you're requeening because you've got a really stroppy hive, you're probably in your best interest to take the old queen away and basically wait for a day or two so they think they're queenless. But even then, sometimes they'll get psycho and want to raise a new queen out of their own prodigy and, and do your new queen a damage. I've started, if, if it's a really bad stroppy hive, I've started to do a split and introduce the new queen so she's got her own little colony and then I'll remove the old queen and then I'll basically amalgamate them back together again so they can, yeah, so you've got a better chance of your new queen living. But having said that, it really, it's really out there. I don't know, there's a 70% chance that your queen will be accepted and a 30% chance you'll get wiped out. So, but that's beekeeping, who knows? I mean, I'm sure we'll get an avalanche of people tell you that there's a whole lot of different ways of going about it, but less is more i think <laughs> and nicole says would the plastic boxes be more sterile so that if you had foul brood etc you could just use just use a disinfectant on them well now my dear down here in australia we have these rules that are saying that there's only two ways to actually clean a bee box if you've got foul brood you either have to burn them or you have to send them to get gamma rayed and with the plastic stuff there's only, all wax dipped them, I should say. So that's kind of where the old wooden boxes become an advantage because you can get your hot wax dipper and you can dip them and sterilize them and clean them up. I know if you have a look on the web, you get across in the USA and a few other places around the world, they're not quite so pedantic about foul brood. They have disinfectants and they're acceptable. So if, if you're living outside of Australia, you can probably get some chlorine and dip your plastic box in that and kill the, kill the blooming problem. Personally, I haven't done that because we're not allowed to, so hell, let, next month send me another response and tell me whether your repopulated box didn't get foul brood again. You never know. And our last question comes from Joe. Hoo hoo, hi Mark, some professional help needed. I have read conflicting reports on plastic hives harboring more moisture condensation than the most of the timber hives. Do you find this a problem? As I've noticed, you use both types on your property, which is quite true. Also, do you find that the foam hives stand up to the heat better in Australia than the traditional timber hives? Well, I reckon we'll start with the last part of the question first and work our way backwards, which would be confused the crap out of everybody. Yes, the Paradise foam boxes I find really good as far as heat retention, cool retention. I find the Paradise hives are really good from protecting the bees from the heat down here in Oz. I mean, obviously where they come from in Scandinavia, it's freezing jolly cold. So I guess it's just the reverse of what they're trying to achieve, which is, yeah, anyway, they are great. The only thing I've found as far as if you get to the moving around part of things, you really want to have a load of foam boxes that are all together because they rub on a wooden box and there's a bit of something and it's not ideal. If you go on, I don't know, if you go on to the commercial boys that are actually running all foam hives, they have them on stands and they have a metal lid on the top to protect them and so the whole thing is another, another level of involvement. Me, I've just got a few of them because I thought they were pretty spectacular. I actually ended up basically transitioned into using our foam hives on our permanent sites where we raise our queens and do that part of the operation so for that they seem really good so hell i'd go out and get a couple more well, actually, i've got a couple more in the shed that i've got to get some bases for as we get our, as we expand our queen rearing operation and to the other question about the plastic hives which is the the new plus boys which are i think they're quite a good hive i quite like the fact that you don't have to paint them you don't have to do any maintenance they don't go rotten heck and as far as the moisture content goes, really that's been solved because now they have a vented base. So if you're gonna go with the plastic hives, get the vented base, which has nice little slits across it. 
and I have absolutely no moisture problem in there at all. As a matter of fact, I have less moisture in those hives than I do in my wooden boxes. So there you go. They are, I reckon they are a way to go if you, if you can afford them. Once I used up all my old wooden boxes that I got laying around the place, I reckon I'll transition into a few more of them. Well, hopefully that was informative. Thank you all you guys for sending in your emails and your questions for our Q&A episode. Everybody seems to love a bit of a response. So if you want your question answered, don't forget to send us an email, ask the question. And if you happen to be a Patreon supporter, you're gonna get a priority. So just mention that in your email and heck, you make sure you get on the list. And if you're not a Patreon supporter and you'd like to be down here somewhere or other, there's a link that you can click on and you can say, oh, I'd like to support the Bush Bee Man and keep the show alive. But if you're not, a, if you're not up for that, that's cool. Just click like, subscribe, share, and do all that stuff that the internet seems to be good at. And I'd just like to have a shout out to all you subscribers. You know, like, man, I don't know, I think we're over 50,000 subscribers and we have a lot more people that just watch us that aren't subscribed. And if you are just a watcher and not a subscriber, click the subscribe button, because that helps us as well. That all gets, shares the love. And you know, I don't know, we get on this algorithm -y thing. I'm not exactly sure about all this internet craziness, but it's kind of cool. So the more people that like us, the more people that'll find us, and the more people that'll like us, and then away we go. It's exponential.